Uh, to the gentleman from Oregon, Mr. DeFazio, ranking member of the Aviation Subcommittee. The gentleman is recognized for three minutes. Well, uh, I thank the gentleman for yielding. I mean, we all salute uh, the innovation and, and the achievements uh, uh, that we've recently seen in uh, the uh, early days of uh, private uh, space flight. And we certainly do want to uh, encourage that. Uh, but uh, we go a little bit uh, too far in this legislation. Uh, I don't understand why uh, the, the uh, committee has inserted uh, the references to paying passengers and that we wouldn't regulate until after the serious injury or death of paying passengers. You know, it took me a decade uh, here in Congress to strip uh, the FAA of its requirement to promote the industry. Uh, that was something adopted in the very early days. It seems to be similar to what's going on here uh, to say that uh, the, in the early days the Civil Aeronautics Board would, uh, would have a charge of promoting uh, the industry and, and later uh, regulation uh, became uh, more paramount. Uh, but up into and, and through the 90s until a tragic accident uh, with uh, the then AirTran, uh, the uh, the industry was uh, both regulated and promoted by the same agency. I pointed it out for years as a conflict. Uh, and it was only after that incident uh, that we finally changed the language and said, no, it would be paramount that they would regulate in the interest of public health and safety. Uh, but here we are again uh, trying to codify uh, the old uh, so-called tombstone mentality of the FAA uh, by including paying passengers. It's one thing to say, well, here's someone who invented something or built something, uh, and they're going to try and fly it at their own risk. Uh, or here's a professional person who's going to try and fly something that was built by this person, fully uh, knowing the risk. But it's another thing to begin to say paying passengers uh, will, uh, will fall under the same, uh, the same uh, aegis in, in this bill. Uh, and this was not uh, considered uh, by the Aviation Subcommittee in any form uh, over the last two years. It was never referenced to the Aviation Subcommittee uh, over the last two years. There may have been some communication somewhere with some member of the staff or between some member of that committee and some member of our committee, uh, the, uh, but, not, uh, but not the Aviation Subcommittee who has jurisdiction over these matters. So, uh, I would suggest that uh, there is not an immediate crisis. There's no reason that this bill must be rushed through today uh, in this form. Uh, it could well be passed next year. Uh, the uh, liability provisions exist elsewhere and will be continued elsewhere. And then we could have a more thorough discussion of when it would be appropriate to begin uh, to regulate uh, for the health and safety of passengers uh, on uh, these uh, on these spacecraft, uh, that's that's uh, I think something that uh, uh, it's not wise to codify today because it took us from uh, 1932 or 33 until 1996 uh, to uh, to recognize for two additional minutes to remove uh, that provision uh, in regards to the FAA. 60, uh, 64 years or so uh, that that carried over, even though it was long after the time uh, when the when the industry needed promotion or the FAA should be promoting the industry, uh, they were still doing that, uh, and people died because of that. And it may not be in the next you know uh, year or two, but eight years is a pretty long time to say, well, we're we're going to go eight years before there could be any regulation regarding paying passengers. I mean, there could be. I, I would certainly. Same level of that same criteria that you're talking about was in place when, our, when airplanes themselves were developing, that we would have had that same level of, of progress in, in the development of aviation. Don't you believe that if we had the same level of regulation now, uh, on, uh, then, uh, that we have now, would have just stifled all sorts of creativity at a time when people knew they were taking risks? My father. Well, Flew out. I remember when he told me he got on a plane that flew in on a dirt road and uh, charged five dollars to get on this plane. It was an old World War I spad or something, mm -hmm. and that excited him so much about being able to participate. And because of that, we had a whole new industry that was created. Don't you think that we well, should give it, give our people developing new rocket re transportation? Re re system? Reclaiming my that time. Same kind well, I mean, here would be looking at you know presumably much wealthier people paying gigabucks uh, to have the experience. 
but still, I, I think the point is that uh, it's not necessary to attract entrepreneurs. There are already entrepreneurs out there experimenting. Uh, there are professional pilots out there willing to fly these craft. Uh, but to take the next step and say that paying passengers, uh, which may or may not be a very knowledgeable and wealthy person or, you know, someone uh, of lesser means, uh, would be subjected to to uh, to those risks without any regulation. It just doesn't seem to be necessary to to promote this industry at this point in time. It's already moving forward. The liability exemption, uh, I believe, is the key. But to say that if they're going to go to paying passengers, they couldn't be regulated. I mean, I think that's a kind of a bright line where we could we could draw a line and and uh, agree. The gentleman's time has expired. If I could, you know, gentleman from California.